imagine if I, Prince Vegeta, cared about what people thought about me. Most guys are in a mental battle with themselves thinking that whatever they try to do, others are going to judge them. This is a yep. pathetic way to live. I agree. It is natural to care about the opinions of people you truly respect. True. But it is a waste of time to care about the opinions of strangers you will never meet in your entire life. Dude, or Hate even even or more so, strangers that you will only meet one time and never see ever again. There are people who get social anxiety going into Target and act a different way because they're worried about these people and what are doing in the fruit aisle. Who cares, bro? Who cares? Do what you want. Live your life. Jealousy always comes from the bottom because most people don't ever want to see you win. We True. tend to give strangers tremendous power over their opinions of us. True. And we never end up chasing our dreams. Yep. A life full of regrets. Dude, if I were to live my life by what the anger Twitter mob wanted me to live my life as, I'd be miserable. I would have killed myself yesterday. These people are pathetic. They, they put everyone to the such unrealistic standards that they themselves don't abide by. Rules for thee, but not for me. It's pathetic. They are pathetic. This is a miserable life to live. Only a small percentage of men chase their goals and they mute the outside noise that doesn't benefit them in any way. Yep. Let's go over the techniques that you can use to break free from the opinions of others. Stop being afraid of letting people down. Not everyone is going to agree with what you do all the time. It is impossible to have everyone like you because everyone in the world doesn't hold the same opinion. Yep. It's okay to have haters because without them, the journey to success would be a boring one. If you don't have any right. haters, you are doing something wrong. You Fucking true! Fucking true! There are too many people who try to please way too many people by being safe their entire life. Bro, if you don't have people disagreeing with what you do at all, you're a robot. You're an NPC. You're a cog in the system. You're a corporate dick sucker. That is how it is. Please everyone, because you will drive yourself insane. You can take me for example. I am sending my message across to men who need help and want to improve their lives. If I were a coward and a people pleaser, I would have never started this channel Damn in the right. first place. I understand this information can rub off the wrong way to some people. Some people just can't handle the truth. True. And they rather live in their delusional world where they think everything is going to be okay. True. Meanwhile, their life is in complete turmoil. But I am okay with the fact that there have to be losers in this world because not everyone has the mindset that I have. I don't care about the opinions of a woman. To be a fucking winner. If everyone's special, nobody is. And that's the damn truth. Here's the reality, boys. The world is a cold, depressing, dark place. And you can sit there and you can cry and you can talk about how hard it is. Or you can get up, do what needs to be fucking done, and make this shitty fucking world your favorite place to be. Woke feminist or some simp. What I am trying to build in this channel is greater than following the path of degeneracy. Yep. I am trying to build an army of warriors who are not phased by the opinions of others and have the self-confidence to achieve anything they set their minds to. You must have a strong backbone and be okay with disagreeing with people and even confrontation. There are enough cowards in the world, so it is easy to stand out from the crowd. So I cannot tell you how beneficial it is to have a friend that you can have a disagreement with and talk it out. And even if tensions get high, you know that you're still cool at the end of the day. Straight up. It is, I'll be, I'll be real. One of the most beneficial people I've ever had in my life is this guy called Zizix. He's currently streaming right now, by the way. And he has shown me that when you do have a very close bond with someone, you can disagree, you can argue, and you can hash it out is what it is. And just fucking talk and really give both your perspectives, even in a combative type way. But the conversations that you can have when you have that level of understanding and trust in your homies is insane. And the social, like the social, the, 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 the intellectual peaks that you can reach by knowing 
I'm going to say how I feel. You're going to say how you feel. We're not going to hold any punches, and that's when the conversations get really good. Always stand up for yourself and for what you believe in. Learn to say no. Saying no is something men are afraid to say. For some reason, they think saying no to something you don't agree with or want to do is a form of disrespect. This is completely false. Here's a crazy bit. There's a crazy tip I can give you, too. This is something that a lot of people get used their entire life. And this is one of the biggest things that, that they'll, they'll ever tell you. And please apply this to your own life. Stop saying yes to people thinking that if you do something for them, that makes you a good person. It doesn't. You can do something for somebody because you think it's the right thing to do maybe about three times. If you keep doing that, you're just a bitch. You are. You need to set boundaries. Say, I was there for you when you needed me, but I'm not going to be there every single time because I'm not your mom. I'm not your bitch. Straight up. What if it's a coworker? A coworker is way different. If it's a part of your job, do it. But if you're helping people out of the goodness of your heart, right, and you're not getting anything back, just start setting fucking boundaries. Set boundaries, okay? And if you if you enjoy it, that's totally different. But if you're doing something that you don't enjoy doing because you think it's the right thing to do and you want someone to like you, stop doing that thing because they're just going to take advantage of you. Once again, you can do it if you like doing it. But if you don't like doing it and you're just doing it to strengthen a relationship, that has diminishing returns and it's really fucking rapid. After the third, I got you, bro. Diminishing returns hits crazy. And let me show you what I mean by this. Here's you, here's your homie, okay? You say to them, I got you. Here's your friendship meter, okay? The first I got you is going to get you to right about here in the friendship meter, okay? The second I got you is going to get you about here. The third I got you is going to get you about here. The fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth I got you, it wears off, okay? It wears off. It's not worth it. And these people, when, they, when you teach them to only rely on you, it's going to form a very bad parasitic relationship. And then that relationship isn't going to be a friendship. It's going to be a job. And you need to be very careful. No shows other people how much you value your time. Yep. If you are not interested in doing something or it goes against what you told yourself you weren't going to do anymore. Say no politely or else people will think it's okay to ask certain things from you. There are people in your life who can take advantage of your kindness and will try to manipulate you into believing you're a bad person if you say no. Yep. Stand your ground and don't be used by others who don't care about your well-being number one example of this family family will use and manipulate your kindness and your family bond forever and if you just start doing shit for free for your family in perpetuity you're just a bitch and you will live your life as a bitch believe in yourself your own self-doubt is stopping you from your full potential there is nothing wrong with you you only think there is I'm going to give you an example, and I'm going to keep this very vague, but I know a person in this chat knows who I'm referring to, but this person really wants to live their life, and they want to live their life the way they want to live it, but the problem is, is that their family says that their way of life is wrong, and that they should live their life the way they live their life, but the problem is, their family is just like living miserable, unfulfilling lives. And they're telling them to quit their job and go back and live at home and not pursue any of their fucking dreams and just become a cog because that's what they deem a good life is. No, you don't have to live your life according to anybody else's standards except your own. Your life is for you to live, not for your family to tell you how to fucking live it. I don't give a fuck if my family disagrees with the way that I live my life, then they can just not talk to me. They're not the one who has to wake up and be me every day. I do. So when I live my life, I'm going to do exactly what I fucking want to do. 
Now, sometimes every now and then, I might not be able to do the exact thing that I want to do, but I'm going to make sure whatever it is that I don't like doing is going to allow me to eventually live that life that I want to live. But if the decisions and actions that you make are not ones that you want or actions that will lead you to be able to do the things that you want, stop doing them. And when you can understand what actions those are, and I'm going to, I'm going to pull out pain again, things, okay, things you want to do, do these, okay, things you don't want to do that will lead you to do the things you want to do. And then there are useless things. This should be in everybody's fucking mindset. And this will lead you to live the most fulfilling type of life possible. I want to kill the uh, lizards. Exactly. Things that you want, Todd. Exactly. Yeah, you get it. But does that make sense? And really start, really start thinking. Like, for example, you right now are working a minimum wage job. You hate your job. But you currently have to do that job in order to survive. And if you survive, then you will get to a point of where you can do the things you want to do. Now, here's where you don't want to get. This is the doom zone, okay? This is what you're supposed to do. You do the job that you don't like in order to have a means to get to the place you want to do. And then you train and learn and you attempt to achieve other aspects so you can start doing the things that you want to do. Here's where people ruin their life. They work a job that they fucking hate. They get their mentals crushed by the system. And when they're done working that job and they go home for the day, they don't have the energy to put in the practice to start aiming towards the things they want to aim towards. And they just get stuck in that life and they give up and they become lazy and they become complacent and they're stuck there their whole fucking life. You have to find the will to be able to achieve the path to get to where you want to be in life. And trust me, I was there, guys. I was there. Okay? I was in college. Doing basics. Fucking hated it. Was only doing it because I thought I was supposed to. Every day of my life, I fucking hated it. I knew what I wanted to be, and that was to be a content creator. I knew I wanted to be a content creator. But I kept on making excuses because my studies were making me too tired and my medication was making me too tired. So what I tried to do, I attempted to kill myself. I am so glad I lived. I am so glad I lived. I took a bottle of my medication hoping to God I didn't wake up. I am so glad that my body was too big to be killed by that dose. Because if I didn't, I would not be here today. Never give up on what you were trying to achieve. Don't let any of these external factors hold you down. Make it a point to live the exact life that you want to live no matter what. Because I'm telling you, man, other people don't have that strength. They don't have that willpower, but you do. You just have to find it. I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you it's in every single human being. There is something wrong with you because you haven't accomplished anything of importance. Stop depending on others and stop looking for companionship just because you are afraid of being alone. I mean this genuinely, one of the worst, one of the worst things that you can do is invite someone into your life because you want to fix them or inviting weak, pathetic people into your life because you're lonely, people that you don't like. You will become the people that you surround yourself with. You will become the content that you consume. So when you invite a horrible person into your life, you will become them. It is better to be alone and be comfortable with yourself than being alone with shit company. Start being selective with your friends. Don't let people exist in your space that you don't think are good people. Get your bad friends gone. Tell them you cannot talk to them. Tell them that you just think you're on different planes of existence and our paths don't align. And while you enjoyed the times you have, you don't think that's what's best for you and go your separate ways. Do not invite people that don't make you stronger into your life because you will become them. Trust me, the sooner you stop depending on others, the sooner you will stop caring about others' opinions. You will realize that the people around you don't have the same drive to pursue excellence because most people are lazy and are sheep. Yep. There is great power in self-love. 
Surround yourself with winners. I understand this can be hard because the people around you are never on the same page as you. I want you to think of it like this. When you live in a house and you live in a room, what do you do to that room? You decorate it and you make it your favorite place to be in. If, you're, if your house isn't your favorite place to be in, you need to fix your house. You need to enjoy being in your house. Okay, when I go to my house, what do I have? I have a couch. I got a yellow couch. You want to got a yellow couch? Because I'm in a white room with a yellow couch. What is it? It's the yolk in my egg room. That's the whole thing. And I thought it would be funny. It's my favorite thing to have. What do I have behind me? Merch and collectibles that my community sent me in my P.O. box. Wonder why? Because my community are my favorite people on fucking earth. They sent me a fucking eggy Shogun hat, a fucking lewd-ass anime figure, I have my fucking favorite mangas back there, Berserk and Vinland Saga. I have them both on there. I have my childhood stuffed animal. I have a gut statue, okay? And I have photos of my cats and me right there. My, my house is my favorite place to be in. And the way you treat your house is the way that you should treat yourself. You should make yourself your favorite person. You need to be your own favorite person. You need to love yourself, okay? And you need to build what's on the inside of yourself the same way you would build a house out that. Since teleworking, it has become more and more important to take care of your home and separate the rooms where you work and the rooms where you live. I absolutely agree. Not everybody can do that though. That's why I don't even want to talk about it because not everybody has the luxury of having multiple rooms, but you should make your living space your favorite place to be. A way around this can be to join social groups and network with people who can provide value to you and vice versa. This your friends, and this is one of the things that I really enjoy. I'm going to list some friends and I'm going to, I'm going to tell you why I have them in my life. Okay. Zizix. I have Zizix in my life because he is a strong male and he is great at communication. He is straight and he is brutal to a fault. Okay. But that helps him communicate to people the way they need to be communicated, which is straightforward. I also had that quality, but having another person really helps me get even sharper. I have another person in my life called Colin. I really enjoy Colin because he has the ability to laugh at any dumb shit that's in his way. That's a very important quality to have. I have another friend. Her name is Pink. I really enjoy having Pink in my life because she teaches me compassion and actually how to enjoy life and how to be happy because she is a happy, compassionate person. It is very nice. And for a while there, I was losing grips on that. I lived for about 10 years straight where I was miserable every fucking day. Right, But it is nice to have people who actually understand how to enjoy their life and be compassionate for other people. These are the examples of things that you can look at your friends. Look at your friends and think, why are they in my life? What are they doing for me? How are they improving who I am? And you might think that's selfish. No, it's not. You need to see your friends as like stat bonuses, okay? And you need to understand how you benefit your friends. I know for a fact I have a multitude of friends who look up to me as a role model. I understand that 1 million percent. I understand that there are some people who think, man, I would like to be like this person or have this trait that I have. 1 million percent because I have the ability to convey and express emotions and truly un understand how the human mind works. It's very good to have. It's okay to be selfish sometimes. Absolutely. I'm friendless. That's okay. Now, you need to ask yourself why you're friendless. Is it because you're a shitty person or you got unlucky? Figure it out. This might have to involve stepping out of your... Oh, yeah, or another great example, Asmongold. Bro is one of the smartest motherfuckers on planet Earth. And you know what Asmund taught me? How to not give a fuck. Because I'll be real, I used to give a fuck. I really did. Asmund taught me how to not give a fuck. And that was about two, two and a half years ago. Very good, dude. Comfort zone and being willing to meet new people. And Seer taught me your mom jokes. <laughs> the whole idea of being a lone wolf. And Seer also taught me another very important skill, which is why I will always be grateful to Seer. Seer taught me to give a fuck about how I look. Because how you look is how people perceive you. And I started taking care of myself much more ever since I saw how much Seer cares about himself. Because when you look at Seer, you see confidence. You see a well put together man. And I'll be real, okay? I mean, we saw how I used to dress, guys. We, we saw, I would cover myself in blankets, be ashamed of who I was, put a beanie over my head because I was ashamed of being bald. And then I realized if I just take care of myself, then we're all good. That's all you need to do. Why would you not take care of your own body? Wolf is completely. What about Miz? You got to understand, I think Miz, 
Miz is entertaining. But here's the thing with hanging with Miz. Miz doesn't see you as a human. Right? You know what I mean? He he really doesn't see anybody else as a human. So I'll be real. We really don't hang out or talk. Like I'll, I'll just be real. But he's entertaining. You know that that's. Hey man, he's very successful in his career. Good for him, man. Garbage. You need a team of powerful warriors who can elevate each other to accomplish things you thought were never possible. Strong men always lived in tribes and it is unnatural to be a lone wolf. You need a group of people who have your best interest at heart and share some of the same views on the world. This makes it much easier to stop caring about another's garbage opinion. True. You have a strong inner circle that uplifts you. To find these types of men in your life requires effort and time, but it is worth the trouble to escape the matrix around you. Analyze the people in your life right now. If they provide no value to you, or if you feel like... Exactly what I just said. They are slowing you down from your true mission, then stop associating with them. Straight up. I remember I used to have friends who would... Even more than friends. I used to have friends and more than friends who would hold me back from doing my job. Who would guilt trip me when I would stream. Who would say, oh, don't go live. We should play video games instead. Fuck off. I am doing my fucking job. I am doing my fucking job because that's what I need to fucking do. You, you, you need to be able to do your fucking job. You want to know why? Because the world... You see, I think these fucking white girls who go to Starbucks who say, oh, you should go travel. You'll really learn more about the world. Okay, bitch, how? With what money? If you don't have money, if you don't have a source of income, you can't just stop working. You need money to fucking survive. You have to. Everybody does it. You can't guilt someone for doing their fucking job. It, you just, you simply cannot do that. The only time where it is okay to guilt someone for doing their job if you think it is damaging them or the people around them and there is an alternative method to make their job easier and to make them more successful. For example, I have many friends who I tell, quite literally, quit streaming. And you might ask, why do you tell them that? Because a lot of people hear me tell them, quit streaming. And think, oh, wow, he's attacking my character. No, you dumb fuck. There is no reason to go live on Twitch and stream for 16 hours a day to 10 viewers. There's no reason. If your goal is to be successful, there's borderline not even a reason to go live until you can get at least 50 viewers. You need to build yourself on opposing and opposite platforms like YouTube, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, and bring those people to your Twitch, okay? Because Twitch is not a place where you go to get new viewers. It's a place where you go to strengthen your relationship with your viewers. This is a relationship strengthening platform, not a platform that gives you new viewership. So this will build a better connection. But you need to grab these people from other fucking places and then bring them here. Because... <laughs> Guys, when was the last time that you were like, oh man, oh, I, I really want to go, uh, I really want to go watch something. Uh, let me just, let me find a new streamer today. Yeah, let me find a new streamer. Uh, who can I watch? Okay, let me go find somebody new. Let me go find somebody new. You know what I'm going to do? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to scroll as far down as I can. I'm going to scroll down as far as I can. And then, yeah, I'm going to just watch somebody. Hold up. Uh, I'm going to watch somebody. Yo, I got to keep scrolling for a little bit. Yeah, let me just go further. Oh, yeah, here we go. Yep, I want to watch this one. It was too cloudy to see... Cloudy here to see anything. Uh, All right, I'm going to watch them every day forever now. Yeah, I... That's not how it works. That's not how it works. Until you have familiarity, ain't nobody clicking your fucking stream, brother. Focus on Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. And, 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 and that's just how it is. Okay, if you want to do this shit smart, that's what you got to do. And you know what's crazy? That person had 16 viewers, which is more than 99% of the platform. So why the fuck are you chilling on Twitch with one viewer every day? Streaming for eight hours. 
And why would you not go on YouTube and make videos to attract people to your Twitch? That way you can do the best thing on Twitch, which is actually talk to your viewers after that. It's very easy to grow on YouTube, guys. It is. If you make good content, they will come. If you learn what a good thumbnail is, if you learn what a good title is, if you understand SEO, if you make good content, they will come every single fucking time. Big T, this advice has been gold for me because I'm starting making Wu content on YouTube. Great. I hope, I hope, Hundreds of you guys start making new content for Wuthering Waves and you keep consistent on it, uploading two, three, four videos every day until Wuthering Waves launch because a lot of you guys, guys, you can make a career off it. You really can. A lot of you guys say you wish you were a content creator. If you're not making content for Wuthering Waves, you are straight up squandering that opportunity. You could start right fucking now. Look what Shinya did in a week. Look at what Shinya did in one week. In one week, he went from one subscriber to 12.7 thousand subscribers. And he did that just by listening to my advice. Straight up, don't, don't tell me you want to be something if you're not actively putting your effort towards that. Because then I just don't believe you. Having a strong brotherhood on your side makes you more powerful. When we feel supported, we're more likely to take risks and pursue our passions, leading to a more fulfilled... Well, you kind of gave him a boost. I've given a boost to many different channels and each one, the benefit they get completely depends on what they put in. You get out what you put in. And I'll be real, you know for a fact, I go onto Wuthering Waves, search by upload date every single stream and I try to find smaller content creators to highlight. So don't act like if you were to make a video and it was good, I wouldn't react to it. Because you know I do that every single fucking time. I'm legit an example, also true. Like just make a good video. Make a good title, make a good fucking thumbnail. If it's, you say it's the easiest job in the world. If it's that easy, make a video. I'll react, just make it good. That's it. And if it's trash, it's trash, exactly. And then I'll say, hey man, quit. <laughs> okay, just do it, man. Just fucking do it. Filling and satisfying life. You won't feel the need to conform to societal standards and the opinions of others. Stop seeking permission. Don't ask the average person if it's okay to do what you want to do. Trust yourself to make the best decisions about your life. Why would you adopt the thinking of someone who you see whose life is in shambles? Trust True. your instinct and believe that what you are doing is for the good of your well-being. Turning to friends and family about your choices can be detrimental rather than helpful. When you seek permission, you are handing people the power to stop you. Most people in this world have no idea about what it takes to be financially free and True. are slaves who always follow societal standards. The majority of people don't take a minute to analyze if what they are being told is a complete lie. People nowadays lack critical thinking and never question their current situation. This is because people are too comfortable in their pathetic lives. This is why I said you must seek a group of strong-minded men. You only have one life. Imagine when you're lying on your deathbed. You tell yourself about the time you said you wanted to do something, but you didn't because you were scared. I want you to be scared of the fact that you will die as a nobody and no one will remember who you are because you never accomplished anything of significance. So live your life caring only about the things you care about. True. This will make you realize you need to overcome the fear of failure or embarrassment. Whenever you think about someone's negative opinion, I want you to remember that they will die a loser and you will die a winner. Because Damn right! Do you think I give a fuck that all these dumb fucks on Twitter who think anime characters are real think that I'm a bad guy? Do you think I give a fuck when I go on Twitter and I see all these kids who want to, all these people, all these adults, all these kids who want to fuck kids call me a bad guy? You think I give a fuck? I say, thank God. Thank God this motherfucker has a problem with me. Thank God these people don't like me. I don't care. Do you really think that anyone who has any amount of understanding beyond a surface level, who understands nuance of jokes, is actually going on Twitter, reading what I said and having a problem with it? Absolutely fucking not. You know who does? Sheep. People who can't think for them fucking selves and realize, oh wait, he's just making a joke. And there's thousands of these people. And they will try to control your brain. There's no reason to listen to these dumb fucks. 
take action and not live in fear like the rest of the world. It is now way too easy to be someone in this world that someone respects, because most people are losers and lazy. All you have to do now is work hard and perform, regardless of how you feel. Grab life by the neck and take control of your life. I believe in you. Here's the biggest thing that I would love to get a message across to anybody uh, who hears this shit. When you wake up and you say, oh man, oh, I just feel like shit today. I can't. Everybody has shit days. And depending on how you can perform on your shit days is what will separate you from everybody else on this earth. Everybody can operate when they're at a hundred percent, but the real winners, the real people who can succeed are the people who can still perform 80%, 60%, 40%, 30%. I'll be real. I'm still weak as fuck. Okay. Cause when I'm at 10, 20%, I can't do it. I wish I could, but there are some days I shit you not where, and you can ask the people who I live with, I'm paralyzed. I'm, I'm unable to speak. I'm unable to show any emotions. And I just lay there like a pathetic puddle of shit. And I wish I was strong enough to overcome that. But there are still days where I can't emotion, where I can't really emote, where I really don't think I can smile. But if I can still move, I can keep going forward. Bro legit just dies. Yeah, I know. Pink seen it. But as long as I can keep moving, I can keep going forward, man. And that's all you need to go. Bro, this video pumped me the fuck up. I love shit like this, man. I love shit like this because I know there was at least one person who opened up YouTube and decided to make a channel and is going to make content. I love, I love that shit, bro. Because do you know, there's a universal, there's a universal fact. Do you know the number one person in your life that is going to hold you back more than anybody else? Take a guess. Yourself. A million percent. And if you can conquer yourself, you can conquer anything, man. So you just got to work on you, okay? You wouldn't you wouldn't go in Elden Ring and try to fight millennia at level one, okay? Now, some people do. Some people do, right? Some people do. And those people are the LeBron James, okay? The Kobe Bryants, the Gokus. We ain't like them, but we don't got to be like them. But you know what we can be? Because this is what most people do. Most people die on Tree Sentinel. They give up. But you know what you should do? Go fight some mobs. Level up. Get some gear. Go to Millennia. People quit, say it's too hard. Nah, you gear it up. You build up the strength. You kill her. Or you fuck her. One or the other. Fuck her. Blow her up. She's gone. You win. And that's when you win. That is when you win. I'm planning to make videos when Wuwa releases, but what should it be about? I can edit and used to make videos... But I really just don't know what hits and what doesn't with gotcha players since I'm so disconnected from gotcha content. If I were to tell you every answer, you could only follow. You have to find your own path, man. You have to. Here's what I recommend. Go to YouTube, type in Wuthering Waves. You have two options. I'm going to tell you what I did. Y'all know Caleb City? I said, man, this guy's content is fucking great. I'm going to steal that shit and make it for the gotcha community. Blew up immediately. Dude, Caleb City, I realized this is unsustainable. So then what I do, I said, okay, let me find somebody else. I saw a channel called Sean B. I called a channel called YDCB. I found another channel called Childish Plays. I found another channel called Jew Bagel. And I said, I can make better content than them. I took their content and I made it better. Kept going, kept grinding, kept making guides, kept making guides. Went to Genshin, more guides, blew up. what I do next? Oh, Ludwig. I'll take his videos and I'll make them for gotcha. Oh, Asman, I'll take his videos and I'll make them for gotcha. And that's all you got to do. Just find who you think you can transfer into a space. Find a niche that isn't be filled. Fill it. Find people's content that you think you can make better than them or make them in a different scenario that's working and then just do that. Oh, Mizkif's thumbnails? Steal those. They're on my channel now. That's it. After guide video, what should you do next? It is for your path to find. It is your path to find. Tucky, I am planning to start making content. What's your advice on starting? Okay, you want me to give you my number one advice for starting content creation? Number one, I promise you this shit will change your life. Stop planning and just fucking do it. Just upload. It's that easy. Just start. Start. Stop thinking about these things that you want to do and just fucking do them. 
Just do them now. Stop thinking about what you're going to do and just start doing the things you want to do. It, 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 it's really not that deep. Like, it's better to upload something than upload nothing. Yeah, no one's expecting a perfect first video. One million percent. Me when I do my driving test. <laughs> hey, just take a couple drinks. Hit the road. Get on out there, brother. Stop making excuses, man. Stop making excuses.